Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 630. Orgasm, where have you gone? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to talk about a subject very dear to my heart and most women's heart, and that is the subject of orgasms and why we don't have orgasms as frequently or as easily after age 40. We may not have orgasms at all after age 40. So this is a, uh, a problem that patients have come to me with since I was in private practice starting in 1985. They'd ask me, what happened? Where, where, where did my sex life go? I don't know what happened, but I can't, I can't have an orgasm. I don't want to have sex anymore. What is wrong with me? And honestly, when I was trained as an OBGYN, we weren't trained to know anything about sexual response. It's very interesting that they've left that out. And even now, there's very little training to the doctors that take care of women and their sex lives and the outcome of their sex lives, which is babies. The out, but they don't teach us anything about the sexual response and sexual dysfunction. So until... Um, the turn, turn of the century into 2000, we didn't have a lot of easy resources to find things out because I like to research things. If a patient brings me a, a problem and I don't know the answer, then I go to, now I go to Google Scholar and look up all the medical articles about it so that I can understand what the answer should be for them. I do the research for them because many times they're written in in doctor ease or medical ease, and a patient wouldn't be able to read that study and interpret it. So I, I do the research and interpret it so I can have an answer for them. Um, I can't even tell you how many times I had patients come to me and, and they would stutter, they would cry, they, they couldn't get out the question that they had, and that is, why, why is my sex life terrible now? It was always really great. And then all of a sudden, I can't have an orgasm. That is so private that they didn't ask their friends. They didn't ask, and they had trouble asking me. And if I'd been a guy, I don't think they would have asked that question. So um, I felt very inadequate in terms of answering that question and giving them any reasonable reason that we could then fix. So in after the turn of the century, we got, we got a lot of information on the internet. And so I could research medical articles easily without going to the hospital library. And what I learned was that um, many people thought that orgasms at that time were, were made possible by estrogen, the female hormone estrogen. So I got that information and I said, hmm, well, let me see how that compares to my own experience with my patients. Because many of the women who came to me for uh, help with their orgasms, I had already put on estrogen because they had painful intercourse. So estrogen solves that problem. As you get older and you lose your estrogen, let me back backtrack for a second, then the vagina gets very dry and it gets very small. So small that two fingers will not even fit in it, maybe not one. So it shrinks. And that makes intercourse with a normal sized penis very painful. It may even tear uh, tear the vagina in, in a woman who's status post menopause and doesn't have any estrogen. So that was an easy answer. Here, take this estrogen cream or you can take estrace uh, orally, and that will help the pain problem. 
However, none of my patients that I solved the pain problem with got their orgasms back. And they also didn't get their libido back. So clearly to me, that was not the answer to this problem. Yet in literature that I could find, that was the answer. That's what people in OBGYN who had done some research found that that was the answer. I don't know how they found that was the answer because it certainly wasn't the answer for my patients. It did make pain go away. It didn't give desire or orgasms back to my patients. So I was at a loss. Well, when um, I lost my own ovaries and uterus in 2002, I didn't lose them. I had them removed for endometriosis. I then could understand their problem. I was replaced with estrogen, which only stopped somehow hot flashes and kept me from having a dry vagina, but it did not give me back my hormones for sexuality. I felt like I didn't have a sex basically without, um, and I certainly wasn't having sex because I didn't really want to have sex um, without this other element. And I found personally that as soon as I got testosterone pellets from Gino to Tara in 2002, that all of a sudden my sex drive was back and my sexual response was back and I had orgasms again. Voila. I found the missing element. Well, then I started researching testosterone in women, and I found, um, a little after that, a book by Beverly Whipple called The Science of Orgasm. And it specifically went through all of the physiology, the way, the way your body works, and the anatomy of how an orgasm t uh, actually takes place in a woman, and what affects it. And they acknowledged that testosterone was the key to orgasms and sexual response and libido. Now, there were several other articles in other types of journals, like endocrinology journals, uh, but not OBGYN journals, that also acknowledged that testosterone was necessary for normal female response. Okay, that's 2002. So I then had an answer, and then I started giving testosterone to my patients. And 95% of the time, people got their orgasmic function back, and the, the excuse me, women got their orga orgasmic function back, and they got their libido or drive to have sex back. And I watched it solve a lot of partner problems where they their partner was still uh, fully testosteroneized. Uh, he was. They, men don't lose their testosterone or, or it usually doesn't become a, an issue or symptomatic until they're 55. And these women were 40 something. So they were dealing with a husband that wanted to have sex and still was fully functional. And they're going, eh, I don't want to have sex anymore because it doesn't do a thing for me. Now I had the answer for that problem as well. But um, I, I also had backup with Dr. Whipple's book. And uh, I had a lot of other information that I could get from medical articles uh, on the internet, so I didn't have to buy 25 journals every month. So then my question was, where is this in the OBGYN literature? Why does the one uh, group of doctors called American College of OBGYN, or ACOG, that all OBGYNs have to be um, have to go through training, testing, and um, go through a verbal and a written test to actually become one of the fellows in OBGYN. I wondered why that's not in their literature. And interestingly enough, the ACOG journal is called the Green Journal. Um, it still isn't acknowledged. So this is 21 years later. It's still not acknowledged as the hormone that actually makes a woman able to have an orgasm and to have uh, a normal libido or a normal sex drive. So I, that's one question I, I'm not sure I will be able to answer um, before you know I die, so I'll have to ask God. But I don't know why they don't acknowledge it and why it's so obvious to me after using testosterone and treating women that they get their sex drive back. I can just tell when a patient comes to me after I've given them testosterone and usually and estrogen pellets, they come back at three and a half months to four months and they're happy. 
And I mean, it changes so many other things, brings back so many other parts of being young that that makes them happy too. But usually they have this mysterious little smile. And if I ask them, how is your sex life? They go, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's just, I mean, they're ecstatic that they got that part of their life back. And I'm ecstatic because I helped them get that part of their life back. So it only takes a few months on the right therapy. And the right therapy is just giving you back that hormone you used to have before your ovaries failed or before you became menopausal. You get back or replacing what you are missing in the most physiologic fashion. So it is the best way to get your sex life back, pellets are. Um, but testosterone in general does work to on our brains and on our bodies to give us sexual response and in our brains to give us sexual desire. When I treat people with testosterone, I have a 95% success rate at bringing women back to having what the same level and um, strength of orgasms as they had when they were, say, 30. Not when they're 19, because that's a little excessive. We kind of overshoot when we're teenagers and have too much sex drive. But our, uh, our response is successful 95% of the time. I even have people who have what we call primary anorgasmia, meaning they've never had an orgasm. I even have those folks, when I give them enough testosterone, get an orgasm. And it's amazing to see somebody and talk to them about what they've been missing all this time. Most of the time they're over 50 and they've tried everything, but nothing worked. And their spouses stayed with them trying to bring on an orgasm, uh, but nothing worked until this. And this makes them uh, and their partners very, very happy because they feel like they've got a complete relationship. If you've never had an orgasm, you're not sure what you're looking for. And they always come back to me and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know everybody talked about it. I didn't know what it was. And now I have it. And now I understand why it's so important to be able to have that kind of climax. So that happens. And when I treat people with testosterone, I also get a lot of people who become um, multiple or multiple orgasmic. So they don't just peak at one time during sex, they can actually have one or two or three orgasms during a sexual act, which is not typical. And I can't make that happen, but some people respond that way. And it is somewhat dose dependent, but not always. It's just dependent on the receptor sites in your tissues, how you respond to testosterone. So knowing all of this and having treated this for 20 years and knowing that the one easiest answer is testosterone. Why are we not giving this to everybody? Well, a recent article in the journal Menopause, believe it or not, Menopause, um, was titled, Oh No, Where Did My Big O Go? Okay. Um, it was written by an MD, um, FACOG, fellowship, uh, or fellow in the American College of OBGYN, and he has several other uh, abbreviations uh, behind his name. But he is uh, trying to educate gynecologists and family physicians about orgasms. But not once does he mention testosterone as a treatment for anorgasmia. He is still relating what we learned in medical school and residency for me 40 years ago, that estrogen's the key. But estrogen has never brought back orgasms to my patients. And after seeing, uh, I think I did, the, I did calculations, and I think that I've seen m in patient visits more than um, 20,000 patient visits over the last 20 years. Uh, I've never had estrogen be the answer to anorgasmia or a loss of orga orgasms. So this is why we still don't know anything about, <laughs> about um, testosterone is because People who write uh, articles as experts are still touting estrogen. But I don't know how they come to that answer. It may be how they structure their studies. It may be um, 
It may be that this is what they learn, so they try to prove it through a study, but they don't mention testosterone or testosterone pellets in any of this um, research, and especially in this article. So um, there, they also tout in this article that sex gets better after 60, and I'm wondering who they're looking at, because honestly, sex just gets worse after 40. It doesn't come back after 60. I mean, that's honestly... I have people of every age group after 40 come to me for testosterone, and none of them said they got a better sex life, I asked them, after they went through menopause. It's always much worse or absent. So once again, I don't know who they're studying that would say that. Um, aging is not, is not something that naturally is going to give you your sex drive back, it's only going to take it away because you do need hormones and you need estrogen for to stop pain and friction. Uh, the dry vagina is something that can really um, block your response, but testosterone is necessary to even want to have sex or to have an orgasm. So I went back and I saw that they have a... These two facts were the basis of their article. And I then remembered something that um, I just learned, and that is 35% of medical studies are inaccurate or just plain lies. They, believe it or not, you can manipulate statistics to prove your point. If you want a point to be made, if you want it to be something, you can move the numbers around to make that happen. Um, you can ask the wrong questions of patients to get the answer you want. Um, the study age group can be wrong in, in the people that you're looking at. You can actually, like in the WHI study, their average age was 65 or 69. And, and they were studying whether estrogen caused breast cancer. Well, they found that estrogen alone doesn't, but estrogen plus Provera does. So, but they were looking at the wrong age group because people start on hormones usually when they lose their hormones, which is between 40 and 55. The title of an article may be misleading, and um, if you don't read it, you think the opposite of what the study actually says. And uh, there's lots of different ways that I have not exhausted the ways you can manipulate a, a research article to say the things that you wanted to say, but I have to, I have to tell you that what was in this article in, in um, 2023 um, in the Journal of Menopause was absolutely the opposite of what I know to be true with all these patient visits over the last 20 years. So there has to be something wrong with the study or there has to be something wrong with the researcher or they just made it sound easier than it is. Right now, there are no testosterone replacements that are approved for women. There are more than 20 different testosterone replacements for men. So men have an answer when they get to 55 and they lose their testosterone and their ability to have sex and to ability to uh, orgasm, they can go to the doctor and get a prescription. We can't. There's many different kinds of estrogen, but we don't have any at testosterone that we can get that is prescription in every pharmacy for women. It's really, it really is a shame, but that would be one reason you would have an article not say that you need testosterone because where are you going to get it? Well, where we get it and where other um, pra practitioners or doctors get it for their patients is compounding pharmacies. They make it for us. They make our pellets for us in the proper dose and the proper size that we can insert it into the hip of both women and men, but women is what we're talking about, um, and it will dissolve slowly over time, and that will bring a woman's sex drive back and her orgasms back. So all you have to do is to keep replenishing the testosterone that their ovaries used to make. Because if you're somebody who just doesn't understand compounding pharmacies, if you're a doctor who doesn't know how to get in touch with them, um, both College and Belmar Pharmacies are two of the pharmacies that we use that will make up testosterone in different delivery systems. They'll make it up in creams and gels, 
and they'll make it up in um, vaginal tabs. However, the only one that I found, only delivery system that I found actually works the best is testosterone pellets. So if you are a patient who has lost her orgasms, has lost her sex drive, has a marriage or a relationship teetering on the edge because you don't want to have sex anymore, then you will have to ask questions and find the right doctor in your area who will give you testosterone and understands how it works, understands how to dose you in the pellet form. That is what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who understands sex after 40, who understands hormones, and who knows how to treat you. So don't give up. Um, we're in St. Louis, right in the middle of the country, and in Kansas City. We have patients that come from all over. So we are a viable um, practice that could help you. But there are many other doctors that are age age management medical doctors, or um, they are some other type of age anti-aging medicine that understand this. We have groups, uh, two groups of doctors that get together all the time for conferences. One is an AMMG, age management medical group, and one is A4M, and I can't even remember what all the <laughs> A's are. But A4M also has a huge following of doctors who understand how to give testosterone. So don't give up. Your sex life has not left forever. It is reversible. And it's reversible with the easiest, with one hormone. So even if you can't take estrogen, you can take testosterone. So don't give up. You still can get your sex life back. Thank you for listening. And I hope this helps you and your partner uh, have a more satisfying sex life. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.